Right, a rare 12 inch 78 RPM shellac record, a Columbia record. It's uh, Christopher Hassel. He was an actor, he had been in films and stage. He was a poet uh, and author of uh, several biographies on, on, on poets and several books of poetry, of his own poetry. And uh, probably most uh, of, his, uh, of his biographies, uh, probably the uh, Rupert Brooke biography is probably the best remembered. Uh, uh, poor Christopher Hassel, he died at age 51 running uh, along the platform of uh, Rochester Station in Kent. So he was uh, uh, on his way to catch a train to go and see his daughter at the Royal Ballet. She started as a ballet dancer, his daughter Imogen. And uh, he collapsed uh, and, uh, of a heart attack, and he, I don't know if he died at the, uh, the scene or he died a couple of days late, later of, uh, of uh, you know of his uh, heart problems. Age 51. Imogen, uh, she um, as I say, she started as a ballet dancer, and she went on to become a, a model and a and a uh, and a minor sort of uh, film actress. And uh, she uh, probably most notably appeared in uh, Carry On Loving uh, with Terry Scott, sort of uh, canoodling <laughs> uh, with her. And uh, poor old Imogen, she uh, she died uh, in her mid-thirties. Uh, she was found dead in her flat in uh, Wimbledon. Uh, she, she had uh, overdosed on, on a type of tranquilizer. Let's have a listen. It's uh, Christopher Hassel uh, reading his poems, and the first one is a soliloquy to Imogen. This night it chanced, pulling my shirt off, lifting from the hanger a dressing gown for walking in the twilight, I paused before the mirror, half afraid to see a live man stripped as for the grave, and mused how valeting decay removes yet further clothes, and the last self lays bare. Seeing my body, I remembered love and how this intricate machine, supported on props of bone and parceled up in skin, for all its brittleness can make new men, on whose fertility the future earth shall count for habitation. Whereupon a musical expression echoed in my head, sweet as the clappered Angelus, a silverly reiterated sound, the dictionary's sole enchanted word, your name. This is the hour we should be meeting, were not a segment of the world between us. Heaven looks dusty and I sit alone watching the zigzag moths. Over my head a beetle like a medieval knight comes tilting at the air, and all around cool yellow twilight soaks into the earth. Etched on the evening hang the October trees, numbed by this foretaste of eternal sleep. But thoughts in their insistent rush keep me conscious of daytime trouble. We are apart. Apart. That single word explains the gap where peace of mind is wanting. It requires no doctor frowning on my pulse to prove I am the natural member of one body that distance amputates and but a kiss might heal. How sharply blows the wind upon my wound making me spiritually cold. This half of you wants your completing warmth. I know to call your name aloud would serve only to wake the teasing echo, but if in my brain I shout, perhaps you'll move a hand across the coverlet and turn and sigh, almost wake up, then slip again over the edge of life. Men have affirmed that souls migrate like swallows in their sleep to the warm land where they would be, and hold brief hours of truant parley with their loves, remembered sketchily on waking. Here, in this monastic silence, I can feel your presence like a brushing of the wind. Yet have I flown to meet you in the south. We are apart, yet placelessly together. During these spells of mated loneliness, our minds explore a distant frontier. Grey paths are there and shadow-heathered hills that cast a silence on the brooks below. Storks paddle in midstream, red fish flare by, and weeds of leafy stop the lazy water. A land of nobody, the brink of dream, a neutral plot abutting on the grave. Consider how that caricature of eagles, that metal pass over the aeroplane, travels the short preliminary grass 
raises her limp earth confiscated wheels, soars like ambition through the swallowing clouds with song of thunder and bright chest of steel, then hums to heaven balanced on a star. Our speech is but the grassy taking off, trammeled with language, perishable sound. Our silence, the blue liberty of heaven, free of the stammering earth, communion such as saints enjoy with God and lovers each with each.